Hello and welcome to the fifth video in the Ardu Pilot on the F405 wing flight controller inside an AR wing. So in the last couple of videos we flashed Ardu Pilot on this thing, we've checked the configuration works outside the wing and then in the last video we actually put all the pieces inside, figured out how to get the compass and the GPS into position where everything needed to be for the central gravity and the good news is there is still absolutely bags of room inside here so potentially the room for a slightly bigger battery but with the ability to move the battery forwards and backwards inside even with the run cam 5 at the front I'm getting a nice central gravity position and I can also move it backwards and forwards at the field if I find it slightly off as well. Now this video is going to be all about troubleshooting arming. There are a number of things that you need to check when you're building out an Ardu copter, Ardu plane, Ardu whatever system to make sure that you can arm it properly. And at the moment with the way the software seems to be, hopefully this will change in the future, there are some things that tend to crop up. And as usual, just like in the last series, I've had to spend a little bit of time working my way through those issues, taking care of them one by one until eventually I could hold the control for the rudder and throttle down to the lower right hand position and see the nice happy armed symbol in Mission Planner and hear the beeper inside the model give a nice long strong tone to tell me that we were ready for business. Do make sure that you've removed the prop when you're doing all of these steps. We are going to be plugging in the battery. The battery is needed to supply the 5 volts to things like the GPS and compass and when you plug the battery in is also when the VTX and camera is going to be powered as well. So without those bits being on you can't really just fine tune and make sure that everything is working. But you don't want to do that with a prop on. So remove the prop for all these steps and then once you know you can arm it then the very last step before we go to the field is actually pop the prop on. Now the testing that we've done so far, let me just give you a very, very quick update before we dive into the troubleshooting. First of all is just to show you how that connection between the TBS Unify Evo video transmitter and the Crossfire receiver works. Again, if you remember, we've connected via CRSF. That gives me access via the Lua script on the radio to not only look at all the settings for the Unify Evo, but to change everything as well. And to remind you, the reason I've done that is because at the moment CRSF and Smart Audio and all that kind of goodness isn't at the time of recording supported in Ardu Pilot. Let's hope that it's supported soon. And the other one, one of the last things we did in the last video was fix the settings for the voltage and current measuring on the Matek F405 as well. And you can see in the bottom left hand corner in this image that that's now working perfectly too. So let's try and arm this thing and work our way through the errors. Now I would always recommend having the flight controller plugged into your PC with Mission Planner running, again with a prop off, with the radio turned on, and then we're going to attempt to arm it and work our way through. But before we do that, it's worthwhile just pulling down on the elevator to make sure that both control surfaces come up. If one of them doesn't, that probably means it's reversed, and I had to reverse one of mine uh, to get it all to work, and that's just one click of a button, and all the control surfaces are now moving in the right direction. If you find that it's more complicated than that, then there's a good chance that you've accidentally plugged in the right elevon into the left elevon channel and vice versa, so just double check your wiring. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and arm the model. Again, holding the left stick down to the bottom right hand position, so throttle off and rudder to the right and surprise surprise we get a pre-arm check RC12 minimum is greater than and this is something that we saw last time so we're going to jump into the full parameter tree and then we're going to click on RC12 underscore for all the settings for that and surprise surprise yep yep the RC trim is less than the RC minimum so we're just going to click on that once and we'll set it something like uh, 1500 is going to be fine just needs to be more than the uh, RC 12 min we're going to click right parameters and click OK now that probably means that other channels are going to be in the same position so let's just double check them so 13 is fine RC 11 and that looks like that's going to be the next error that we'll get so let's take care of that while we're in here hit enter then click right parameters and click ok then let's do rc10 see what that's like same 
thing. The, the reason that this happens is that what uh, the RC channels that aren't calibrated as part of the RC calibration at the moment can have these slightly wacky numbers. Um, it's I think it could do a better job with this in RD Pilot. I hope they save it. So at the moment I'm having to do this with pretty much all the builds. So I'm just working my way through um, RC8. Uh, that's probably fine because it's the same as RC8 min. Uh, the trim is the same as min, so that's probably okay. So let's go back into flight data and try and arm it again. Compass not healthy. Huh. Okay, that's interesting because actually looking at the heading, it's pointing directly up. And if uh, if the compass isn't enabled or, or not working, when Ardu Pilot starts, it will usually assume that the position or the orientation of the craft is north. So let's just see if it can actually see the compass. So let me just move everything around and I'll click on live calibration. And it can't see the compass at all. So we have a problem here uh, that wasn't there before I put it all into the model. So the chances are we've done something stupid with the wiring or we've got a bad connection. So what I did then was take the compass off the wing, double checked it and made sure there was continuity between the pins on the flight controller and the pins inside the compass and then put it all back together and went back in and gave it a quick test. And I'm very pleased to say that the compass then started to work. So it was obviously just a bad connection. Now in Ardu Plane, you can disable the compass. I've done an entire video talking about why having a compass can be a good idea. Uh, if we have issues like this with a build, uh, I'm not gonna be flying this in high wind, so I'll probably disable it if it's going to be silly, but that seems to have fixed it for now. So I'll do a compass calibration and then that should be back in business. Okay, so, um, the compass is all working, there we are. Now what we're gonna do is just try and arm again, because now the compass is actually pointing in the right direction with the plane on the desk, and I'm getting a bad logging error. Now the bad logging error tends to be a problem with the SD card. I'm using the SD, same SD card that I used in the Omnibus build, which was probably a little foolish of me, the Omnibus flight controller didn't like that card either. Uh, it's a 16 gig card. I've got a brand new 8 gig card here that's flashed with FAT32. I'm just gonna copy the contents of the 16 gig card that it doesn't like onto the 8 gig card and plug that in, and that should hopefully work better. Okay, we are getting closer. So here we are back in with the new SD card. Everything's fired up. Let's just um, actually, while I think about it, um, let me just change where the message appears on the screen. It's slightly off to the side. Right customization in the on-screen display. Um, it's good when it boots up. It kind of scrolls over all the statuses and what's going on. Right, let's do one last try for an arming. And it's armed. Fantastic. Great. Okay, so flight control system is completely happy. One of the really cool things about the Ardu Pilot family is if it's not happy about anything, it won't arm and allow you to take off in a dangerous state. So we have the compass all set. Uh, the other thing we can do then is just set the calibrate level for the nose slightly raised on the model. I'm going to use the uh, orientation of the cameras inside this AR wing. So I'm just gonna prop it up on the desk so that the nose is raised so those cameras are looking out directly forwards and then click on calibrate level for that. And then the last job is to just check your flight modes. I would make sure for the initial maiden, you have the manual flight mode set and at least fly by wire A. Those are the two ones that I would always recommend when you go to the field. The other thing I've done here is in the crossfire, I've actually set the failsafe to be uh, initiate return to home. Uh, the way that crossfire works, it kind of just disables all the outputs, uh, particularly when they're, it thinks they're for servos. So when that's the case, I've um, I had a couple of instances where the Ardu Pilot technology on the F405 doesn't want to boot. Um, so changing that failsafe seems to have made it a little bit happier. So hopefully that's helpful. That's what you have to do when you can't get this thing to arm, then the best thing to do is just plug it into the PC, make sure that all the props are off, power everything up, and just try and arm it over and over again, and the errors will appear in the mission planner screen. And then all you have to do is just kind of work your way through it.
Again, the Ardu pilot documentation and the forums are spectacular for this stuff. If you just search on the error that you can see, you will find the problem. But as usual, I had the RC min errors. I also had the bad logging for the SD card. And this time I've managed somehow to have a bad connection on my compass. So join me next time because she'll arm, because she's ready, because I can spin the motor and everything works. And I know my fail safe will initiate a return to home because that's where I've set it up. We are ready to try this thing at the field. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.